Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to talk about a brand new bear case that has emerged for uh, Palantir and it comes from a lot of people that think this but uh, a prominent person tickle symbol you Alex has uh, tweeted this and this is my luck just when I start making the video it looks like he has deleted this tweet so I have to summarize it he was basically saying that uh, anything that Palantir Foundry can do or most of it can be done uh, by chat GPT and connecting it with APIs and Zapiers and he thinks that this will very much hurt the adaptation rate of Foundry and Palantir's ability to sell. And when I did my first video about Palantir AI platform, a lot of people had the exact same opinion. So I actually wanted to answer uh, this tweet. And as I was thinking about this video today, I saw that Alex Carp did an interview with CNBC where he also answers these exact same points, of course, very philosophically and Alex Carpishly. So I will give you my explanation first. And I know that I'm quite close to this because I'm uh, part of Codestrap's uh, Discord chat where I asked him, no, it, was, it wasn't me, it was someone else who asked the exact same question that I wanted to ask and I saw his response. So we are close to this. He's in the weeds and he really knows what he's talking about. So anyways, let's get into the video. All I ask for you is if you like this content, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel and let's go. So it is true that a lot of the functions of Foundry can be done uh, by ChatGPT and Zapier. I have been a user of Zapier and if you don't know, it's a program that can connect different programs together. It's a fantastic automation tools. For example, I used it when we are running uh, Facebook ads uh, and I want the leads that come from Facebook to receive emails from MailChimp, then, you know, with this Zapier, it's like sort of like a middleman that uh, tells uh, MailChimp, the email program that, okay, Joe Blow with this email address and this phone number, please register Joe Blow and start him on uh, this automations to start receiving these emails. And if you didn't have this middle automation, then you would have to manually uh, you know, register every name with MailChimp and, you know, add them to your different campaigns. And I, I've done a lot of automation with Zapier. So here is where I think that Alex is wrong and the people who are worried about this are wrong. And this is where you, we really, as Palantir shareholders, start cashing in on the annoying fact that Alex Corp is not an engineer, he's a philosophist or a philosopher. And he has spent a lot of times thinking about the ethics of AI, how Palantir and you know, AI uh, should be used, uh, how it should be transparent, how the data should be divided with people. And you don't get this with a chat GPT and Zapier solution. And Remember that uh, even the All In podcast was talking about this, that it's relatively easy to make a large language model and it's very easy to train it on data. But the true weapon or the true gold of the future is going to be the proprietary data that you have to train the AI on. So for example, it's relatively easy to make a self-driving car software or you know an AI that can self-drive cars, but you need to train this AI on a lot of real life data. And it's only Tesla who has you know millions of cars on the road with you know 16 cameras getting real-time feedback all the time. So even if the the you know the model is simple to make the data is very very hard to get and the thing is that very many big companies hospitals the cia um, you know the airline companies they don't share their data publicly for very good reasons so that means that chat gpt doesn't have access to this data and these companies would need super high assurances that chat gpt and zapier are safe and they just can't get it because they're not they're very easy to hack and uh, and on, on chat gpt you don't even know what is happening in in the background right this is one then number two for many, many uh, of these purposes, you need the granular granularity of a Palantir that certain people can view 
certain data. So for example, if all your hospital is running on Palantir, let's say, you don't want the receptionist to go and be able to check Joe Blow, what's his medical record, and you know why is he getting the medicine that is get uh, that is getting and this is even the least of the problems you don't want the receptionist to be able to change this data and do updates with it right so you want the ai to say when the receptionist is asking about patient data mm, you don't have permission to view this data or mm, you don't have permission to edit this data and none of these are built into chat gpt and um Zapier. However, Alex is right about one thing. And he I was reading through his Twitter responses and he said that his main point is that startups are not going to want to adapt Palantir because there is other simpler tools to work around this. But the truth is that the startups never use Palantir in the first place because Palantir is for very big companies that have very big data problems. Uh, and I don't know of any single startup that is a, you know, a three-man garage company that is using Palantir because it's simply too expensive currently. So this was never and has never been a target audience for Palantir. And those people, yes, probably will use ChatGPT and Zapier uh, to solve their problems. But again, these people were never going to buy from Palantir in the first place. So this is my answer. So I believe that this bear thesis is completely wrong. Uh, and again, this was confirmed by Codestrap, who is the Sandy Monroe of the Palantir community in his Discord. And now let's look at uh, another video. This video, which is Alex Karp explaining the same thing. Very good video, and I will give you my comments. Welcome back to Squawk Box. At the Leadership Summit in Kiowa just yesterday, I spoke with Palantir co-founder and CEO Alex Karp in an exclusive interview. Take a look. It's going to really crush a lot of businesses because for two reasons. One, it pen tests the underlying architecture. Because if you run an algorithm or an LLM on an architecture that actually doesn't work or is crumbly or crispy or somehow is only built for one use case, which is a lot of architecture, it won't work. It will also so he's explaining exactly the same point that some of these uh, models are very, very limited. Palantir is a very holistic uh, solution that can, you know, use all the data and, uh, yeah, really think with everything. Cross architectures, it'll because there'll be an inability on the LLM side or on the large language model algorithm to like, well, how do I create a barrier between them and trust in my trusted network in the classified and non-classified? You know, also, how do I have a barrier between the algorithm or large language model and decisions that are ethical or ethic, involve ethics or norms or I have to trust this before I shut down this plant or I can't have everyone in every single office uh, or every single hospital bed be of one demographic um, and our business is built to do that so it, it, the, the other thing about large language models and quite frankly uh, algorithms is it's just really good for America because First of all, it's good it's, for America because because it, it's while we struggle with like imposing trust on it, and of course my company is in the business of that, and we have I think enormous advantages. Um, if you try to do this in China or Russia, there are just too many things you're not allowed to research. It, it, it's going the rules are going to be too stringent. They're not going to actually be able to build this. They're very far behind. Uh, the culture for building it is not exactly there. And then it's good for America because we have great allies in Europe. And uh, we're, we're just much quicker at adopting technologies. We all talk about open AI, but obviously Google is trying to do this. Others are trying to do this. Are, is this kind of technology ultimately become a commodity? Or is there something um, very specialized something, about it? Uh, that, well, the large language model is, is it a lot comes down to powering the consumption. Like, so they're going to be very, very large language models. I think they are going to end up being somewhat specialized. But the real value, the part is going to be the intersection between your business logic, your business norms, or your laws and ethics, and large language models. So he said here the exact thing, that the real value is how you connect this large language model to your data safely and securely, morally and ethically, with the correct decisions. And Palantir is seriously the only company that can do this. And the people who get all those three are going to make money. Should we be translate that to Palantir, because they are the only ones that can do this, they're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> about the power of AI, 
the power of these models because right now they're being used to you know write poetry yeah they're, uh, they're, they're when they're actually can actually um, create a transaction or do something on the battlefield what happens they already are so they are very dangerous but the reason we have to continue down the path is a we have adversaries that are seem to be bereft of any kind of ability to control their behavior right and b the American economy is still the most important in the world. And what do we know about the American economy? It's, it's the most adaptive. Are we at a transformative moment? I mean, when you hear Sam Altman talk about the future of this, there are some who say this is like, you know, the, you know, the browser, you know, back in the day, that this is one of those moments where we're going to look back in time and say this is it. This is this transform. I think there are two moments, honestly, is some, somewhat immodest of me. The war in Ukraine and large language models have fundamentally changed the world. And you cannot put this back in the box. But then there's the question is, how can you trust either? So you don't... So I had to think about this a lot when I first watched this because he said, like, the war in Ukraine and the large language models, it changed the world the same way. So because, you know, at first the statement, at least to me, you can let me know in the comments if to you it made sense. I, have, I had to think like, what does he know that we don't know? And I came to that he probably means that it has changed war forever because uh, people see how important AI is uh, in warfare and, and how much you really need to invest into this to protect your country. And the only logical explanation if this this really had this magnitude is that Panther is going to get a lot, a lot, a lot of contracts. I cannot understand it any other way. Uh, please let me know in the comments uh, what you think, but this is how I understand it. The AI in the hands of Russia and China that we have, you don't want the LOMs. What is the trust variable? And I, I, first of all, society cares about that. It happens to make trust work. You need an ontology, you need branching, all these technical terms. It exists, but the simple layman's terms is, is if the LLM tells me to do, gives me information on cancer research or how I should distribute hospital beds, is that what I actually do? And that requires a control function between the business, the business logic, you, right. ethics. So what he was speaking about today, uh, in this last part, which I, I didn't uh, take up, is that ChatGPT hallucinates a lot, meaning it very confidently gives you a very wrong answer. So let's say you're using ChatGPT and you're running a hospital or a power plant or, you know, whatever. And ChatGPT says, okay, this uh, patient has no chance of surviving. Uh, you, you can take them off life support and give the hospital bed to someone else who actually needs it, right? And can you trust this? Because with Palantir, I, 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 okay, first I believe that you can trust this, but still they have a, a built-in fail-safe that I think that uh, these very, very important uh, decisions have to be checked by seniors or doctors or people that can make the decision. Uh, and by the way, in Codestrap's Discord, I again, somebody asked him what does uh, Palantir do with hallucinations and he said that because ChatGPT is trained on so uh, wide uh, data, this was at least my understanding of it because, you know, this stuff is super technical. He said that on Palantir they make sure that the only data set that the AI can use is the company's own data. So when you ask it, for example, like how many hospital beds do we have or how many of this, how many of that, it's very limited to, like it basically cannot hallucinate because the AI is very trained to not do that and very limited in the data that it can use. And uh, yeah, so this is what Carp was saying that if you use another AI and let's say it says you need to shut down this power plant because you know, whatever, uh, the levels are too high and it's for the safety, like can you even trust this? And that is the only company that has all these points that we discussed, that I know, that has a reputation that can do this reliably, is Palantir. And I actually become very bullish on this. In my view, what is happening is ChatGPT has made a lot of companies reach out for AI. So a lot of companies are saying like, how can we have AI because everybody is using AI? And these companies are ending up at Palantir's footsteps. Obviously, we need to hear the earnings call to see if this is true. But what I see from this guy's body language, what I put together in logic is that Palantir is doing very, very good. And this is, 
not a bear case, but a hyper bull case for Palantir. Anyways, let me know what you think. And uh, if you want to go further, check out the Patreon link in the description box below where you can get access to my Palantir valuation model, other stocks valuation model. You can ask questions for me and lots of other goodies. Uh, and it would make you very happy if you would support the channel and the least you can do is make sure that you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Ciao, ciao.